Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, e-learning in 2016 and beyond, the inspiration, possibilities, and solutions. The webinar today is organized by Informa and held in association with Adobe. Our host today is Pooja Jaising, Senior E-Learning Evangelist at Adobe. We hope that you find today's seminar um, we hope that you enjoy today's seminar and find it useful. Before the seminar today begins, um, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping points to help you make the most out of today's session. Our slides will be available on our slides at share page after the webinar. A link will be emailed to you early next week. A recording of the webinar will also be available to download and the link will also be emailed to you. Please take the time to complete the post-webinar survey that will pop up at the end, as this helps both us and our webinar leader improve our future webinar offerings. You can submit your questions via the platform using, during the session, and they will be answered during the Q&A session held at the end of the webinar. I'd also like to remind you that today's webinar has been organized in the run-up to the ATD Middle East Conference which Pooja and many other learning and development specialists will be speaking at. The event takes place on the 29th and 30th of May 2016 at the Address Hotel Dubai Marina. As a thank you for attending today's webinar, we're delighted to offer you a 15% discount to attend the event. Please use the code in the current slide when registering to qualify for your discount. Now I'd like to begin today's webinar and hand you over to our webinar leader, Pooja Jaising uh, from Adobe. Thanks, Lydia, and uh, welcome everybody for this session. Uh, today we are going to talk about e-learning in 2016 and beyond. And we'll talk about the different trends that are there uh, in the e-learning industry, some of the common ones, and then we will see how to make them possible using Adobe solutions. So here's a, a quick look at the agenda for today's session. We'll start with trends. We will look at uh, a new age storyboarding app, uh, which will help you create your storyboards and directly uh, get into production of your e-learning courses. We will also take a look at uh, responsive e-learning courses, which will help you create your mobile learning courses and even uh, develop multi-platform applications. Uh, we will also see how you can easily manage and track your courses and how you can use gamification and improve the learner experience on a learning management system. With that, let's uh, start talking about the hottest uh, trend in the e-learning industry and that is about mobile learning. So, as you know, uh, there are around 34% of organizations who have already implemented mobile learning programs. And rest of them, about 80% of them, are thinking about implementing mobile learning for, for their organization. And that's solely because there are tons and tons of mobile devices available and they want to make the most of it for the learners. It really helps them uh, provide learning to their employees or uh, the people um, who are uh, either working for them as vendors or uh, are as a part of the support staff. They want all of them to learn wherever they want and uh, allow them to have even the just-in-time or just-in-place learning. For that, mobile learning is really, really important. And here, as you can see, there are some statistics that by 2018, there will be around 2 billion smartphone users. That's a huge number and for the training organizations it's a good number to tap. Also the tablets uh, of late have, uh, you know, uh, the, the sales of tablets have gone a bit down but still by 2018 there will be 1.4 billion tablets available. So it makes sense for the training professionals to make their trainings available on the mobile devices. And the first thing that needs to be done and is being done uh, for adapting the e-learning courses uh, to mobile format is to switch to HTML5 format from the Swift version. Uh, 
and this is being done uh, pretty pretty heavily uh, a lot of people have stopped using the swift or the flash version and are moving towards html5 version to uh, create and deploy their courses what uh, what this helps is that uh, if the learner is viewing the course on their tablet or mobile devices they are able to view the course if it's a swift version they will not be able to see the course at all so uh, with this they are able to view the course but the uh, you know the experience is not really good especially on the mobile devices because everything is getting shrunk to a smaller size and if it is not getting shrunk you have to really pan and uh, zoom into the course screen to see, make make the you know most of uh, what's going on on that screen to solve that problem there is a, a really good uh, format which is responsive e-learning which is being used by a lot of e-learning professionals to create their e-learning courses so uh, they uh, design the course for the primary device and then for the uh, secondary and tertiary device it auto adapts itself so that it looks uh, really well on all those devices and then you also get control to modify the look feel and position of that particular uh, you know uh, layout to make the most of that particular screen size and show the best possible output so responsive e-learning is really nice uh, even when the learner is viewing the content on their mobile device they get to see the best output they don't have to really uh, you know take a magnifying glass to see the content and read what's going on over there so uh, responsive e-learning really helps and it comes from the responsive web design paradigm so if you look at the web pages nowadays uh, all or most of them are responsive in nature and if the website is not responsive it's not considered cool so uh, e-learning is also going in the same direction where a lot of people are now uh, starting to create responsive e-learning courses rather than uh, simple plain HTML5 courses also one more thing which is happening is uh, the use of apps so for learning professionals the uh, the learning management system is coming up with apps where they can uh, provide that app to the learners and the learners can go ahead and browse the courses on the app even uh, download some of the courses and view it in the offline mode also some of the course can be directly published to an app so all those things really help uh, use the app paradigm inside um, inside the iOS and Android devices so that the learners can easily consume content wherever and whenever they want it uh, also one of the uh, really hot trend and which has been a trend for a long long time that you can imagine is video based learning videos make it really easy for uh, learners to uh, look feel and uh, you know grasp whatever knowledge or information is being imparted to them even for skill training even for uh, process training it's a it's a great tool uh, for uh, for the learning professionals to use and then impart knowledge these uh, video based learnings are now becoming a very very short in duration so if you uh, if you look at um, the different guidelines that you have for video creation it's always recommended that your video should not be more than say 2 to 5 minutes because the attention span of the learners is really less uh, really low and they will not watch the videos which are longer than that duration unless it's like super critical for them to watch it so this also uh, you know emphasizes on the use of micro learning or bite-sized learning and uh, uh, it helps you make it possible using video based learning uh, video based learning is really great but it has one shortcoming and that is that videos are not interactive the only interaction you do with a video is to click the play button or the pause button to make it more interactive what you can do is you can create interactive videos where in between the video or towards the end of the video wherever possible you add some interaction where you make the learner do some stuff answer a question um, interact with the screen click somewhere or drag some object somewhere you add a layer of interactivity to your videos to make it interactive video to remove the shortcoming of uh, the videos that they are not interactive so that's also one of the really cool trends that you have in the e-learning industry uh, 
Also, one more thing that is bubbling up is location-aware learning. With uh, our devices having geolocation available uh, and everything that you use, uh, even uh, some of the uh, web pages or the apps, they use your location to give you some relevant information. So nowadays, even e-learning courses are becoming location-aware, where based on your location, you get to see relevant content that you should be served. So uh, this uh, the example can be that if um, the course is being taken in uh, in Dubai, it will be in uh, in the relevant language. If it is uh, being taken in US or UK, it will be in the US or US English. So it really helps you uh, give that touch of personalization. Also, if it's a compliance course and you want to uh, share the code of conduct with the employees and for each location there is, a step, there is some difference in the code of conduct, based on the location you can serve that content uh, by creating a location aware uh, learning course where you, um, you find out the coordinates of your learners and serve the content accordingly. Another thing, very important one, is skill-based learning. It's very, very important, very basic, but extremely important to have your learning tied to the skills that your learners need to achieve. With the high competition uh, you know, scenario that we have nowadays and uh, technology changing every single day, you need to upskill your employees uh, so that they are able to do the tasks that you want them to do. For that, you have to set up things uh, based on the skills or competencies, and you have to uh, help them, uh, you know, upskill themselves so that they are able to do the projects that uh, that uh, are required to be done. So that's also one of the really uh, cool, um, you know, trends, especially in the LMS market, where uh, where uh, the learners are consuming the content. Also, there is uh, one very interesting and fun uh, and engaging trend that's uh, coming up is gamification in learning. By adding all the gamification elements, you are making uh, the, the content and even the structure as, um, as a fun learning experience for the learners. Uh, another thing that I want to talk about is that people are not uh, going strictly with a classroom or a virtual or an e-learning course. They don't decide that, okay, this is the way we have to deliver the content. They are going for blended learning solutions. So if there is one skill that they want their learners to achieve, they are trying to break up the content and provide uh, that particular information in the way that is uh, that is the best for those learners. So blended learning solutions are real uh, is really helpful uh, to uh, you know treat the content in the best possible manner and provide that experience to the learners. So that's about uh, the blended learning experience. And uh, once they have created all these content, uh, they can easily go ahead and share it with their learners. So these are some of the hottest trends that I can think of. Uh, I'm sure you would have many more in your mind and especially some of the cool ones like virtual reality and other things that are going on right now, even the wearables. So uh, all those things are there, but I don't see that happening much in the e-learning industry. That's why I have just, uh, you know, I thought I'd just mention that and not uh, discuss about that. Uh, with that, uh, we are done with talking about the trends and let me just quickly show you a demonstration of, uh, of the uh, you know, uh, cool things that you can do using the Adobe tools. And the first thing that I'm going to talk to you about is a storyboarding app. So all of us uh, e-learning professionals use, um, say, a Word document or a PowerPoint presentation or any other unrelated, uh, you know, uh, tool from e-learning to create our storyboards, to get a sign-up from the client, and then once it's all freeze, all the text is, um, you know, in place, the visualization is complete, then we go ahead and start using the e-learning authoring tool to create the course. What I'm going to show you is an app, uh, which is a storyboarding app, which will allow you to create your storyboards on the go on your tablet, and then you can take that storyboard and directly import it inside Captivate, which is your e-learning authoring tool, 
and uh, start working from there. So there's no need to start from scratch. You can easily use that tool to create your, you know, further build on that course once you import it inside Captivate. So let me just quickly show you that demonstration and then we will move on to seeing how to create responsive e-learning courses. Let me just quickly close this and uh, let's go to, um, uh, the, so here I'm just uh, showing my iPad and uh, Lydia, can you just confirm if you're able to see my uh, my iPad? Yes, we are able Lydia, to. can you just confirm if you're able to? Awesome, awesome. Okay, so till now, do we have any questions about the trends that you want me to answer before I go on to uh, start the demonstration? There haven't been any questions so far about the trends, um, so perhaps if we go on to the demonstration and then come back to them at the end of the session. Sure, awesome. That sounds great. Okay, so here's uh, my iPad and uh, I have this app named Captivate Draft. So this is a storyboarding tool uh, which will allow you to create your storyboards. So whatever storyboards you create are shown here on the main screen. To create a new storyboard, all you have to do is tap on the thumbnail with the plus sign and that will give you a blank slate from where you can start adding objects. Now the objects can be anything from a picture, from a video or maybe a shape that you want to add. And to add all those objects, you simply have to draw some gestures. So if you uh, draw say a rectangle, it will give you a rectangle. You can easily decrease or increase its size by just holding the corner of that particular uh, object and it will allow you to move it. You can also rotate it by tapping on the uh, rotate button on the top and it will allow you to rotate uh, and place the object wherever you want. You can do other formatting options, but let me just show you how you can draw gestures to add other objects. So let me draw an oval. That will give me an oval. If I draw a line, it will give me a line. If I draw a triangle, it gives me a triangle. And if I draw a cross sign, it gives me a picture placeholder where I can go ahead and embed a picture. If I play, uh, you know, uh, if I draw a forward arrow, it will give me a video placeholder. And also, if I draw an infinity sign, it will give me a web object. So if I just go ahead and draw this correctly, it will allow me to embed a web page or a video over here inside my storyboard. All these objects that you see here are tied to the Captivate objects. So the shapes that you see on the top, they are all smart shapes when they are converted. Uh, the, the image and the video are the native image and videos that are added and the web object is also natively added. If you want to see how, uh, you know, uh, what gestures I used, you can tap on the question mark on the top right corner and that will show you all the gestures that are available. What I missed was text, so for text you can uh, scribble vertically, it will give you a text box, tap inside it and it will give you the keyboard, you go ahead and type what you want to add and then go ahead and close the keyboard and that text will be added at that place. Also if you want to record some audio, you can just scribble uh, horizontally and that will give you the control to add video inside, oh, sorry, audio piece inside your uh, storyboard. All you have to do is hit record and it will start recording your audio. Uh, just a second. Oops. Okay, so, uh, so it has recorded, let me just do this again. So I'll start recording and I'll just go ahead and tap on the stop. It gives me these controls whether I want to play audio, record again or delete. If I want to accept it, I just tap anywhere else and that audio is added to my slide. To add more slides to this particular uh, storyboard, I just have to tap on the plus sign on the right. That gives me a new uh, slide. Here I can go ahead and add whatever I want. So if I want an image to be added here, I can add it here. And then I can either take a camera shot by tapping on the camera icon on the right or I can tap on the gallery and it will allow me to pick uh, the image that I want to add to this particular placeholder. So I can easily go ahead and do that. I can reposition it, resize it, and then I can position it wherever I want. Uh, 
Also, I can uh, convert any object to a button. So if I want, uh, say, a button here, I'll just go ahead and draw a box. And then on top of that, I'll just go ahead and tap on this. And then on the contextual menu, I can tap on the star with the orange dots. And that will allow me to uh, link it to any other uh, slide. So if I want to tap this button and go to slide one, I'll go ahead and select it. And now this has become a smart shape button which will allow me to go to that particular slide. Along with this, you can also add uh, question slides. So to get access to the question slide, you see these three lines here? Just swipe right uh, to it to open uh, the control, and you will see the TOC. Uh, in the bottom, you have the option to add a blank slide and also to add a question slide. These question slides are the most common question slides used in the e-learning option tools. So you can choose one of these, you can easily uh, increase the number of options and do things like that. Uh, let me just uh, quickly, uh, I'm doing a two-finger swipe here and I'm going back here. Uh, let me show you the other controls. So I tap on the, on the rectangle and I go and tap on fill color on the right and that will allow me to uh, get access to the theme colors which are linked to my Creative Cloud account. So here I can go ahead and select the color that I want and that will be added. I can go ahead and select the stroke color. So here uh, let me just go ahead and select this green and after that I can increase or decrease the width of the stroke by just moving, uh, sliding, uh, you know, swiping up or down. Uh, I can also do a lot of other stuff here uh, by adding branching to my courses. So if you want to see the branching, you can tap on the branching icon on the top and here you will see how it is being branched out. This is just three screens, but if you have more screens and a lot of complex branching happening, you can easily go ahead and do that. So uh, it's pretty cool. Once you're ready with this uh, storyboard, you can tap on the envelope icon here to share the storyboard with your stakeholders. Holders, uh, they will get access to uh, the storyboard in the form of a web application. Uh, sorry, a web a web link, and uh, they will be able to open the storyboard inside uh, their web page, and then add comments or add doodles uh, to the storyboard uh, in order to do that. And then once you are uh, you know done with the comments and you have uh, you have accepted the changes, you can go ahead and tap on this cloud icon over here uh, in the contextual menu and that will send it to your Creative Cloud folder and then you can open that file inside Captivate and it will generate a direct uh, course for you. So it's pretty uh, amazing uh, what you can do with Adobe Captivate Draft. If you want to know more about it, you can uh, definitely write to me. I would love to uh, share some more resources with you. With that, let me just uh, quickly uh, close this and uh, let me just disconnect this so that I don't take too much of power. And uh, Lydia, at any uh, point, if you have any questions, please let me, let me know. Um, now let's uh, take a look at uh, the responsive workflow inside Captivate. Uh, to create a responsive course, you just have to go to the welcome screen of Captivate and you have to double click responsive project. That will create a responsive project for you with three different breakpoints and you can increase it to five different breakpoints if you feel like. So here you can see uh, this is uh, this looks a little different from the regular projects and you can see that there are these three breakpoints. One is desktop, second is tablet portrait and the third is mobile portrait. So when you go over there you can see that how the content uh, rearranges itself based on uh, the uh, the breakpoint you are in. And the best part about uh, about this is that you can easily go ahead and add more breakpoints. So I'll just go ahead and tap on the plus sign and now I have five different breakpoints. So I have desktop in the normal mode and then I have custom tablet in uh, landscape mode and this is uh, portrait mode. Then again mobile in landscape mode and mobile in portrait mode. And uh, I can cover most of the scenarios by doing this. Let me just go ahead and get rid of this uh, caption here and let me add Add some object uh, in this particular uh, slide. So what I can do is I can go to media and let me select character here and I can go ahead and add a character image as I want. So I'll just go ahead and select this option and you can see that this character image is added to the desktop breakpoint. I have not added it in the other breakpoints but you can see that it 
automatically gets added to the other breakpoints and it rearranges and resizes itself based on the dimension of that particular breakpoint. So I don't have to worry too much about uh, what to do with it. Uh, also, what you can do is uh, in uh, Captivate, uh, you get a lot of options here to adjust the object positioning. So if you if you have a character image just like this and you want it to be linked to the bottom of the slide, you can just simply go ahead and select bottom and it will resize the object but it will keep it grounded. So you can do all of those adjustments without going and doing it manually inside uh, the break. It looks pretty nice. Let me just uh, quickly open a small little project here for you uh, so that you can see how it looks like in the preview mode. So uh, you can, uh, when you are uh, authoring, you just have to author for the primary view. It's uh, not at all difficult and uh, your content will automatically rearrange itself uh, for the other views and it will look pretty nice uh, when you are uh, you know, viewing it inside the mobile device and the tablet device. Let me just quickly preview it for you. I'll just go ahead and select preview project and here you can see that, um, let me just pause it for you. And uh, these are the three breakpoints, and you can see it automatically arranges itself. Also, in between breakpoints, if uh, the uh, the device that you're using has the width anywhere between these and these, if you move the slide, you will see that it automatically adapts itself to uh, those uh, breakpoint. Uh, sorry, in between breakpoint values. So you have you are rest assured that your content will not look broken. Similarly here, for this particular uh, slide, you can see that uh, the text is automatically adapting itself as soon as we are moving to the smaller uh, breakpoints and it looks, uh, it looks all right. It's not hard to read or it's not uh, you know, causing a lot of stress to our eyes when we are uh, going ahead and seeing it. So uh, that's about uh, the, uh, the responsive e-learning courses. Also, uh, in the responsive e-learning courses, you have something known as uh, effects that are available on all the, uh, in all the type of different types of courses. But let me just show you one quick thing that, that you can do with, uh, with, um, with the effects in responsive view. So here, I've added a star. Let me just color it a bit. And uh, what I will do is I'll right click it and uh, I will select apply. This will give me the effects panel here and I'll just go ahead and add a motion tween effect. So uh, what I will do is just give me a second. Here uh, in Captivate 9 uh, what you can do is you can add a lot of custom effects if you would like to. So those custom effects are uh, available over here. Uh, I'll just go ahead and select say custom curves. So I can start uh, creating a curved path for this star and you will notice that when uh, when I go to the uh, to the other views this curved path is automatically uh, responsive to uh, you know to the size of that particular layout. So here you can see when I come here automatically it uh, it uh, resizes itself so that it covers the entire uh, area. Also if for some of the views you want to change the path you can easily go ahead and do that. So I can go ahead and make changes to this path. I can just go ahead and uh, maybe pick this point and just do it like this. I just pick this point and I make it like this. You will notice that whatever changes I'm doing here is applicable only to this particular view. It doesn't affect the other views at all. So whatever uh, changes that I'm doing here, you will not find it in the previous views. So it has a father-child relationship. So whatever happens to the child view is not replicated to the father view. So here you can see that you have completely different effect applied to the object here and in the mobile view it's entirely different. So you can have that sort of a customization also available. Also in Captivate to create your responsive courses you uh, you get a lot of assets uh, which uh, are available to you for free uh, with uh, the purchase of Captivate and these assets are more than 
30,000. These includes cut out people, games, interactions, and uh, several other things. These interactions uh, that you have are um, you know, responsive in nature, so you can easily go ahead and open, download and open one of these, and these will give you responsive e-learning courses. Let me just uh, download one of the, uh, sorry, open one of these for you to show you how uh, these are already created for you and you can use them. Uh, let me just open this one for example. It's a pretty interesting example uh, for having a click reveal text screen and uh, what you can do is you can use this directly just uh, updated with the text that you want to have for this interaction and it will look completely different on different views. Uh, here you won't be able to find the difference. Let me just go ahead and preview this project for you. Okay, And here you can see that uh, the effects have been applied and when I click on any of these buttons, uh, the content related to that particular option appears on the slide. So everything looks uh, perfect in these three views, but then as soon as you go to the fourth uh, breakpoint, you can see that only uh, the, uh, the reveal text is available, the, the buttons disappear. So to see the buttons, you have to click the close button and then go ahead and open one of these. That is to save the real estate that you have uh, in your uh, mobile devices. So you can directly use this. You don't have to worry about how to design this and use it. You can just go ahead and download this asset and uh, populate it with your text. So that's about uh, responsive uh, e-learning courses that you can create with, uh, with Adobe Captivate. Also what you can do is uh, you can build a ton of interactions with Captivate, uh, like drag and drop interactions or click reveal the way you saw over here. It's super simple. Let me just quickly show you how to create a drag and drop interaction which is like fun. So uh, I'll go ahead and add uh, two objects over here. Uh, maybe let's, uh, let's ob uh, add some character images and create a drag and drop for that. So uh, here I'll just go ahead and maybe select an illustrated character and I will select maybe this one. Okay, I've added this character and I'll just go ahead and uh, uh, make the placement as bottom so that it sticks to the bottom of the screen and I'll go ahead and make a copy of it. So I have two objects here. And the second one, I'll just go ahead and make it a little dimmed uh, so that um, Let's change the alpha to this and maybe invert colors, no. Okay, so uh, I go ahead and make changes to this so that this looks dim and this looks like a drag and draggable object. So to create a drag and drop interaction, all you have to do is you need to have two objects on the screen, at least two, and then click drag and drop. That will give you a three-step process. Let me just move this submit button here. The first step is to identify the draggable. You just select it, go to next. You select the drop target, click next, and then you uh, click and drag an arrow out of the plus sign at the center of the draggable. And that's it. Your drag and drop interaction is ready. You click finish. Uh, let's go ahead and preview it from this slide. And here you can see uh, now I can easily move this object anywhere on the screen. If I place it anywhere uh, not close to the drop target, it will go and sit at its own position. But if I go and place it anywhere close to the drop target, it will snap to that object. And when I click submit, it gives me the success message. So you can easily create drag and drop interactions. It's, it's pretty easy to do and you don't have to worry too much about it. Okay, so uh, that was about uh, responsive e-learning courses. Uh, Lydia, do we have any questions related to that? Otherwise, I'll move to the next section. Yes, we do have some questions, Pooja, which I've sent to you. Um, some of them are a little lengthy and technical, um, so I've sent them to you on the chat function. Okay. If you can just have a quick look at them. Um, there are a couple of questions there. Okay. Okay, great, thank you. So uh, the first question is, does it mean that module can replace PowerPoint presentations? Also, you said flash type of Adobe cannot be used for this. What type 
of Adobe can be downloaded for this operation and what Windows compatibility can it work with. Uh, so I believe you're talking about the responsive uh, e-learning courses or maybe HTML5. I think it's responsive. So let me answer it that way. Uh, so here what it will do is it will use the HTML5 technology which is uh, present with the browsers. You don't need any plugin and here when you're saying that uh, you have to download Flash, I believe you're saying Flash Player, uh, Adobe Flash Player. So you don't need to download any plugins. It directly plays in the browser using the HTML5 and CSS and JavaScript technology. So it automatically creates it and based on the device within height, it will showcase the content. Uh, if this doesn't answer your question, please uh, send one more question and I'll be happy to answer. Wow, this is a long one. Okay, so um, e-learning is indeed a great concept that has been applied and is still applied in many industries countries. My question is how to incorporate e-learning in a market where your client who is your greatest source of revenue is still so far behind, a market that refuses e-learning and strictly wants to learn with printed books, pen and paper and PowerPoint slides. If you embrace e-learning, we will be up to date, um, but also when we do, we might possibly lose our greatest source of revenue. The outdated clients, please answer the question anytime you can. So uh, that's a really good question and uh, yeah, I understand that uh, uh, having a classroom training is a great, great source of uh, revenue, it's expensive and uh, you, can, you can really uh, charge for a nice training course. But uh, with, the, with the, I would say, uh, the loss of having that repeat client, I would say if you create e-learning, you can uh, deliver a lot more with your e-learning courses and it's not that uh, you can you know you have to stop charging you can charge for your e-learning courses uh, as per the seats that are available for them and uh, it should not be a problem and all your training should not be converted into e-learning. It should be based on uh, what is the type of content and I would say that you should go with a blended learning approach. So when you are designing a training content for uh, for your customers, uh, you can have a piece which is e-learning, you can have a piece which is uh, just, uh, you know, their uh, a handout that they can use on the job. Uh, there can be, uh, you know, training which will be delivered virtually or training which will be delivered in the classroom. So it can be, um, you don't have to switch completely to e-learning, you can use a blended learning approach which will help even the trainers uh, conduct the training uh, more effectively because they will have a lot more resources that they can use and they don't have to waste time on sharing uh, the, you know, the facts and the information that the learners can consume on their own and then the trainer can spend uh, the you know the time uh, sharing with them the best practices, making them uh, you know uh, perform those skills and uh, you know uh, doing uh, engaging in some more meaningful activities. So I would say uh, that's the best way to do it. Uh, so Lydia, do we have any more questions other than these two? And if you guys have any more questions, please go ahead and type it in the uh, in the question or chat pod and I'll be happy to answer those questions. Uh, so with that, let me just uh, quickly move to the next piece uh, that I want to share with you. And uh, that is um, how to make uh, the learning experience for the learners engaging, uh, meaningful and uh, something that they look forward to. Because uh, everybody likes to uh, know the things that they should be good at, right? So uh, having it in the form where it's, uh, you know, it's welcoming and it's uh, really nice, it's, it's pretty good. So here uh, you can see this is uh, our LMS which is Adobe Captivate Prime and it's pretty clean, neat and it doesn't have any cluttered interface elements. Everything you need is available on this page and uh, as an LMS administrator, these are the rights that you can have. And I, I spoke about skill-based learning. Skill-based learning is uh, really prominent in Adobe Captivate Prime LMS. So uh, you get 
an opportunity to create skills, have levels of the skills, and then you know tag those skills to the courses that are, have been added to your learning management system. When the learners take and complete those courses, they are awarded those skills and you know that uh, your learners have implemented those skills. Also let me just quickly show you the learner interface over here so that you get a better idea of uh, how you can make your learning engaging for your learners. So uh, when the learner takes a course of in Adobe Captivate Prime, they get to see a beautiful interface where uh, they get an idea of how they are faring against uh, their other colleagues and friends. So if you see here, uh, I have this orange bar on my, uh, on my profile picture. And that indicates my level in the gamification board. And you can see as soon as I hover over it, it shows me that I have attained 1650 points and uh, I am at the bronze level. And these points are not my score. It's not uh, my quiz score that I have attained uh, in my courses. That will be embarrassing to share with your colleagues and friends. These are points that I have attained on being a fast learner or uh, uh, you know, attaining some skill or upskilling myself or, uh, you know, going and doing the task as soon as it was assigned to me uh, or finishing it before time. So, uh, all these points are attained by that and if you click on this you get to see your leaderboard, where you get to see how do you rank uh, with the people who are around you. So, you can easily go ahead and find out uh, what is uh, you know what is your level in in the people uh, in the group of people around you this is a set of like 10 to 15 people who show up in this list also you can uh, rank yourself with your own group so you can easily uh, you know select your user group so if it's a line of business or of a particular manager so if i'll just go ahead and select um, Jason, so Jason King's direct team, it will only show me people who are reporting to Jason. And here incidentally it's only uh, Pooja who's reporting, so let me just take some other name here and that would be, let's see, Karen. So uh, you can easily go ahead and uh, uh, rank yourself against uh, the different uh, uh, groups of people or maybe cost center. So here do, if you select cost center, you can easily find who are the people who are belonging to that particular cost center. So here uh, you can see that these are the three people who are belonging to this cost center and you can drill down. You can even uh, uh, go ahead and add more criteria to it to get the perfect group you want to uh, compare yourself with. And uh, on this timeline you can also add people whom you want to com compare yourself with. So here if I want uh, to compare myself with say Jane Smith, I'll go ahead and click add and start typing Jane and select it here and uh, go ahead and add the tick mark. And Jane will be added to my timeline so I can see realistically how I'm faring against my friends. So uh, that's about the leaderboard, it makes uh, the uh, learning experience really fun and engaging. Uh, also, I get badges for completing my courses. So here, if I tap on this, uh, click on this, I see the badges that I have received. And even the badges that I have yet to achieve, and I'm in between taking these courses, and uh, as soon as I complete these courses by clicking this highlighted link, I will get those badges. And then I can easily download these badges and then embed them in Inside, uh, the social media channels to uh, showcase uh, you know uh, what I have achieved in my uh, learning courses. Also what you can do is you can uh, see your skills so the learners can see how many skills they have attained and uh, which ones they have yet to be completed, which ones are completed and which ones are in progress. So you get a good idea of it when you click it, you get a detailed description of how you are, uh, you know, on your skill achievement path. Uh, learning experience is also very, very impressive inside Adobe Captivate Prime where uh, there is no need of any, any plugins. You just have to uh, go ahead and click on the module that you want to take and it will open it inside a Fluidic player. This Fluidic player is uh, super responsive and uh, it plays 
any content that you have uh, in this single layer. You don't have to, uh, you know, play it in different uh, browsers. It doesn't open any pop-ups. It just plays it inside this fluidic layer where all the different types of content can be played. Whether it's a PowerPoint presentation, whether it's a it's a PDF, whether it's a video, anything that you want will be played inside uh, this fluidic player. And the controls in this fluidic player change based on uh, what you have, uh, you know, uh, what you are playing. So here, this is a PPT, so you get the uh, the controls to zoom in and zoom out. You get the controls to move to the next slide. And once you're done, you can click uh, the next button and it shows the next set of content. And once that next set of content is uh, uh, appears, you can see that the control changes. Here, this is an e-learning course, uh, Build and Captivate. So it shows only that particular uh, module for you. You can also uh, open the table of contents to see how uh, uh, which different slides are available. Uh, you can also go back and see which are the modules. So you can easily go ahead and even bookmark some of these slides. So if you feel this is an important one, you can bookmark. It. You can also add notes. So uh, click on the notes button and uh, add some note here. So here uh, you can uh, just go ahead and add. So I need to read this portion later. Okay, so if I've just added a note for myself, I can go ahead and add it. And next time when I open my course, I can go ahead and click there and it will bring me directly to this particular option. So here you can see this is an interactive module and I can just uh, quickly click and uh, interact with, uh, with this particular option and uh, it will allow me to move to the, uh, to the next module as soon as I'm done. And here you can see that it also shows up in the same window it shows me uh, if I have any classroom module scheduled. Even if there is a video, it will start playing the video for me over there. So I'll go ahead and close this out and uh, let me uh, go back uh, to uh, to the go to meeting and let me see if there are any questions. So there is a question from Neha. Hi Pooja, thank you for sharing the learner interface. This is quite interesting. Thank you. My question is how is this tool different from an LMS system that an organization already has or needs to be run independently? So uh, like any other learning management system, this is also a learning management system but uh, the only benefit uh, you, or I should say one of the benefits that you see here is that you can uh, give a very uh, you know, a soothing experience to the learners, uh, making learning uh, not look as if it's a, you know, it's a monster. <laughs> it will look as if it's uh, it's something really interesting he should or uh, uh, do. So it's it's in a very welcoming manner. There is gamification. There are badges to motivate the learner to come and complete the learning. So yeah, I would say it's uh, just like any other learning management system, and you can have either or. You can have both. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so Lydia, if you don't have any questions, um, over to you. Great, thank you very much, Pooja. Um, I'd just like to ask if there are any more questions, if anybody can, can type them in quickly. Um, otherwise, we'll bring this webinar to a close. Okay, so we don't have any more questions from anybody, so we'd like to say thank you very much for joining today's webinar. Um, we hope to see you at another one of our webinars in the future or at the ATD Middle East event on the 29th and 30th of May in Dubai. Um, I'd like to say a huge thank you very much to Pooja for hosting today and to you for joining us. Um, we really hope that you've enjoyed the session. And um, please do look out for the emails from us that will have more information on accessing the slides and presentation um, and also the special offer to attend the ATD Middle East event. Thank you very much.